identify with the risen Jesus today. He rose from the dead. You know, in all the religions in all the world, no one can say that they were raised from the dead except Christians. If we didn't have a resurrection, we wouldn't have a Christian faith. If we didn't have a resurrection, we wouldn't have salvation. What a joy. I just, I'm just so excited that because he rose from the dead, I'm alive today spiritually. And so are you. Anyone who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved in their house. What excellent news. I can't even begin to tell you how happy that makes me on the inside. People say, how come you're always smiling? How come you've always got joy in your heart? It's because I've got Christ living on the inside. And today, Easter Sunday, we celebrate that. We celebrate what he did. He went onto the cross, took all our sin upon himself. So we wouldn't have to. That, that in itself is great news. And then he was buried. He was put in a tomb, wrapped up in swaddling cloth. On the third day he rose. Do you know what that does to me? It just brings such a joy in my heart because if he rose, it means I'm alive. <laughs> if he rose, you're alive. If he rose, it means that you can become a partaker of the very nature of Jesus Christ today. <laughs> you can become a partaker of his nature. I don't know what that does to you. I know what it does to me. It brings a joy into my heart. Every time I hear myself speaking it, it brings something into my spirit and brings me alive. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? <clears throat> Do you know... People think, you know, why, why would you celebrate something, you know, something like that? Why would he bring such joy to you? Because once you give your life to him, your spirit comes alive to him. You've been walking dead until Christ comes into your life. The day you come to him, your spirit comes alive. Your spirit becomes regenerated. And then you can start walking from one increment of glory to the next. And you grow. You grow in faith. You grow in love. You grow in the miraculous and the power of God. You keep growing until the day he comes and takes you home. Isn't that wonderful? I don't know about you, but that brings a joy into my heart. It brings a joy into my heart. I've got testimonies of Christ living in me. How do I know he's alive? Because he lives in here. Oops, sorry, does that help, help the mic? Because <laughs> he lives in here. How, how do I know he's alive? Because he speaks to me. How do I know he's alive? <clears throat> because I can have time with him. And I can have some time and he speaks to me. He shows me what I need to do. How do I know that he's alive? Because he guides me on a daily basis. Because every day I spend time with him and I open up the word of God, I feed my spirit man and I become like him. Do you hear me? You become like him. I'm, I, 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 I identify with Christ in his death. Isn't that what the word of God says? God teaches me to love you and we love one another. In 1 Thessalonians 4.9 it says that. The love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost who is given unto us. When Jesus came alive, he went and presented the blood before the throne of God. And there it was released unto him. He showed a pure life, a life without sin. He paid the price on the cross, took our sin upon himself, was made sin, took it upon himself. Do you know he died not just bodily, carnally, but he actually died spiritually to the Father at that time. That's how he was able to take our sin upon himself. He died bodily and spiritually. He turned to the Lord and said, why have you forsaken me? Any distancing from God is spiritual death. Do you realise that? And the only way to come close to God is through repentance, repenting, turning from what you know you're doing wrong and turning to God. God says he's given us the gift of repentance through his son Jesus. If you repent, ask God 
the forgiveness for the sins in your heart. And the sins in your heart can be anger, bitterness, hatred, adultery, fornication. There are so many sins. People think one sin's worse than the rest. They're all sin to God. They all separate you from God. And the key to us all is to repent. Today, the world is going through an incredible shaking. The whole world. Who would have thought that a little virus could shake the whole world? I want to tell you the thing that's come upon most people is so much more deadly than that virus, and that's fear. Fear. Why do, why do people fear? Because they're scared of dying. Because they're afraid of dying. I want to tell you, once Christ comes into your life, you have no fear of dying because you're already dead to things here on the earth. You end up dying to things. You end up dying to yourself. God said, he said, if you want to come after me, pick up your cross and follow me. And that was dying to self. Dying to self. Christ knew that if you would enter in that dying with him, that you would be raised up with him on that day. I want to tell you today, I've been raised up with Christ. So have you. Today, if I can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God to heal the sick, to forgive people their sins, Glory to God. Do you, do you realize what we've been given by Christ having died for us? If you identify with Christ in body, then you are the body of Christ and members in particular. That's what the Word of God tells me in 1 Corinthians 12, 27. We are members of his body, of his flesh. And of his bones. Ephesians 5.30 tells us this. We are bought with a price. He died on the cross. How great a price could someone give? God gives his own son for us. God gives his own son so that we might have life. You were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. They belong to God. You no longer belong to yourself. You belong to Jesus Christ. That's if you've given him your life. That's if you believe on him. There are people listening to this broadcast this morning who may want to get their lives right with God because the fear that's come across with this coronavirus thing has caused them to think upon eternity and the eternal things. People are dying through a little virus. Have you got fear of where you're going? Have you got fear of where you're going to end up? Eternity faces every man, woman, and child. Eternity. We've all got to face up to it. One way or another. One day or another. We have to face up to eternity. Praise God. Jesus ministered in a physical body. He was the visible image of God. The invisible God. It's in Hebrews 1.3. He needs another body through which to minister to the lost today. That body is you and it's me. I am God's arms and legs and so are you today. If you enter into the death that he died on the cross and into his resurrection, oh, glory to God, today you become the body that Christ can use today. He wants to use you. He wants to use you. Individually and collectively, we are the body of Christ. You are now the visible image of the invisible Christ. Amen. Turn to the person next to you, if you've got someone next to you, with this social distancing, point to them and say, you are the visible image of Christ today. When I look at you, I'm looking at Jesus. <laughs> when I look at you, I'm looking at Jesus. <laughs> I identify with him in his sufferings. I rejoice in as much as I am a partaker of Jesus' sufferings. When he died on the cross, he took my sin with him. <laughs> I became a partaker of that cross by giving my heart to Christ. What must I suffer? I've got to tell you, a lot of people like suffering. <laughs> or the way they talk, you think they do. <laughs> We suffer tribulation. Have a look at the world today. Most people are suffering, 
having to stay indoors. Oh, what a suffering. <laughs> That's nothing compared to what our Lord suffered. That's nothing regarding to what our Lord suffered. In Romans 8, 17, it says, If we suffer with him, rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. 1 Peter 4, 13. 2 Thessalonians 1, 5. These are some home studies you can be doing. Feeding yourself while you're home on your own. Philippians 1, 29. The word tribulation in Greek means pressure. It means pressure, such as the pressures brought against you by evil people. It includes, yes, and all, things, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I know in our lives that because we've spoken up for the Lord, some people can't handle it. It actually shines a light upon their sin. And they get convicted. And they don't want to be convicted. But I want to tell you, this coronavirus is bringing conviction on everybody today. Jesus never suffered from sickness or disease or any abnormal physical, emotional, mental or abnormal physical sickness. On the cross, he bore our sins and sicknesses, so they're not a part of suffering with him. Do you hear me? He already bore them. They're not a part of our suffering with him. He's paid the price for those. In 2 Corinthians, you can find a partial list of Paul's sufferings. They say he was blind. Had problems with eyesight. <clears throat> Identifying with Christ is self-denial. Deny yourself. That's how you identify with Christ. Come as a living offering, Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, brothers and sisters, come as a living offering offering to God, your normal act of worship. Every time I worship God, I'm actually entering into his suffering. Every time I worship God, I'm entering in to what he's won for me. Every time I worship God, I'm coming into the place where I'll become a partaker of his very nature. Praise God. He says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. In Matthew 16, 24. What is my cross? My cross is linked with self-denial. That's my cross. My cross is linked with self-denial. That's my suffering. My cross is linked with self-denial. Jesus did not suffer on his cross for himself, but for us. Our cross then is not for ourselves, but for others. It's the suffering of compassion for others. It's the pouring out strength to help others. It's weeping with them that weep. In Romans 12, 15, it says, Bear ye one another's burdens. In Galatians 6, 2, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15, 13 says, it's the giving up your own way or your own thing to help another. It also carries over to enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Leave vengeance to the Lord and follow me. Matthew 16, 24. In all the above, you'll be following Jesus. Identifying with him and his faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Believe that God is and you've taken him at his word and you've entered into his family. Your faith grows exceedingly. That means your faith will grow as you take God at his word. You identify with him in faith. Without faith, you can't please God. Do you know that? Today, resurrection has brought us all these things that we can enter into with God. Our faith will grow. Our love will grow. Healing. The power of healing in you will grow. The power of authority with God will grow. 
You can identify with him in his rest. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful news? You can identify with him in his rest. In him, you have power to reign in life. There's power in his name. You don't have to worry about this coronavirus. You have power in God to overcome everything that this virus throws at the world. You can go and heal people. You can speak to them. You can speak to that virus and say, get out in Jesus' name. You cast out devils in his name. You lay hands on the sick in his name. They shall recover. In his name means acting in him. You're in him and he's in you. That's how you enter into Christ's suffering. You enter into, into his resurrection, into the power that comes with Jesus, having been raised from the dead. In him you have power to reign in life. Say reign in life. You have power to reign and rule your emotions. Oh, glory to God. Your emotions aren't going to run your life anymore if you give it over to him. You have the power to rule your own spirit. Proverbs 16, 32. You have power to reign and rule your emotions. You have power to rule your own spirit. You have power to control your God-given drives, such as hunger, sex, thirst. You have power to avoid desiring to fulfill them out of God's order. One of the meanings of the word power is superhuman. It's exousia. You are superhuman because you can reign successfully in your life with him. All because he rose from the dead. Nothing shall by any means hurt you, Luke 10, 19. This is protection from disease, sickness, contaminated water or food, demon power. You have power to witness you can identify with Christ in his ministry because it says you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Praise God. All power in heaven and earth is given to Jesus. Turn to the person next to you and say, you've got the power of Jesus in you. When I look at you, I'm looking at Jesus. When you touch me, Jesus touches me. When I touch you, Jesus touches you. What do you got to worry about? This coronavirus will be over. It's already over in God's people. If only they understood. Amen. All power in heaven and earth is given to Jesus. And now you've received the Holy Spirit. You have the power to fulfill the Great Commission. Go out and teach. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. That's you. That's what this resurrection has done for you. Now, Father doesn't expect you to go out and fulfill the commission with less equipment than Jesus had. Now, Father doesn't expect you to go and fulfill the great commission with any less equipment than he had given to his son, Jesus, because now you've entered into Jesus. You're living in him, he's living in you. Just the grasping of that. Just the grasping of that. He that believes on me, the works I do, he'll do also. Praise God. He wants you to go and lay hands on the sick. How's that going to go with social distancing? <laughs> Actually, you can speak the word. It'll do the trick, just like he did with the centurion. Your hands are his hands. He bought your body with a great price. 1 Corinthians 6.20. Well, if I don't give you enough stuff to study this week, you're in trouble. I'll come in the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of Christ. Romans 15, 29. Talk to people. Give them a fully rounded gospel. Teach them how to grow in him by the power of his Holy Spirit. Leave nothing out. Don't compromise. Not even for the sake of unity. Tell them the truth. The truth will set them free. Amen. Move, speak and testify as God directs you. Let him be your leader and your commander. You therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Identify with him in his purpose. What's his purpose? His purpose be not one should perish. That's his purpose. God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son 
that not one person should perish for eternity. He is willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We are laborers together with God. We are part and parcel of his great purpose. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has brought life into you and he expects you to use it. Amen. True worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks those to worship him. Worship God. Let the power of God fill you up. You're like a battery that's empty. Fill up today. Fill up with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. We'll become witnesses. You know, you're a witness when you have a testimony of what Christ has done in your life. Today, coronavirus is rampant throughout the whole world. It's brought it to a halt. Not just physically, but it's brought it to a halt in regard to its, the finances, which have been so important to the world. But I've got to tell you, we're like the, the sparrows. God says they don't even give a thought to how they're going to get supplied, and they're being supplied. When I entered into his faith, I've got to tell you some chess things. The day I came into the, into the kingdom, I gave my heart to Christ. There's a day he set me on a walk of trusting him in every area of my life. And that included my finances. And people hate hearing this from us, but my finances are tied to the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> I don't worry about whether we get offerings or not. So many people are saying to me, oh, we've got to send you offerings, Rap. How do we do that? Well, we've never, ever asked for offerings. I ask the Lord for the offerings. You give to God because you love the Lord. But I, I get fed by him and supplied by him in the strangest of ways. I remember I, was, I wanted to do a trip with you, send me on to America. I didn't have money once. But I booked my tickets in faith because I could enter into the resurrection of Christ. I booked my tickets in faith. And I was away working down the riverland, preaching down the riverland. I was having a particularly hard time. I called Denise because our trip was coming closer and closer. It was about a week or two away and I still didn't have the money for tickets. And when I called her, the Lord said, call Denise, she'll cheer you up. So I called her and said, you got some good news for me? She burst out laughing. She wasn't going to tell me until I got home. But that very day, someone had sent $7,000 from America. We didn't know anybody in America other than the girl who led us to the Lord 18 years before. And in her prayer time, God spoke to her and she had money at the time. She sent us $7,000, said, God told me. And it just turned up just like that. The weirdest of places, strangest places. He can just bring it to you. So don't worry about your finances. Don't worry about the collapse of finances. We're going to come out of this better than we ever went into this. Mate, the government's just giving you a heap of money you can't even spend. <laughs> He's giving you money you can't get out and spend. Praise God, when this is over, you're going to be cashed up. Get out and start something. Do something for God. Amen? What about sickness? Well, you got the promise from God. That he died for our iniquity. You know what iniquity is? It's rebellion. And we're all rebellious against God. We do our own thing. He died for our rebellion. And by his stripes we are healed. 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 By his stripes we are healed. Receive it. Trust God. Do you know, if someone, if a father went to his little boy and said, yeah, I'm going to give you this. And the little boy had to run to mum and say, you reckon dad will give me what he said he would give me? <laughs> How hurt would the father be? The little boy generally would just trust his dad. If his dad says, I'm going to give you this, he's going to give it to you. His word is exactly the same. It's never failed. He's never, ever failed in his word. He actually spoke that he was going to set his son free and raise him from the dead. In Matthew 27, 50 to 52, I want to, I want to show you something. 27, 50 to 52. This is when Jesus is dying. This is the power. This is the power of resurrection. This is 
to put the stamp on what he's done today. Jesus, at the ninth hour, Jesus cries out with a loud voice in verse 46. He says, Eli, Eli, lama sapachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Here's where he was dying, bodily and spiritual. Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran, took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, leave him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He gave it into the Father. He gave him the final thing he had to give, his spirit. Do you realise this is the sacrificial point? He yielded his spirit to the Father who had guided him to give his life. This is a proof of his giving over and following God in every area of his life. God wants every area of your life. This is a Passover time. You've got to pass over from doing your thing to letting him do his thing through you. Amen. And then behold, in verse 51, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. Now all of a sudden, the division that only priests could come in, one priest, a high priest, once a year to go into that holy of holies was split open and God said, here I'm making a way through my son, Jesus, that you may come and talk to me one on one as often as you want, whenever you want. That's what you've entered into. The ability to have communion with God. And then 52, this one blows me out. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who'd fallen asleep were raised. <laughs> oh, get hold of this. He's dying on the cross. He just gives up his spirit and the graves are broken open and the bodies of the saints who'd fallen asleep beforehand were raised. If you're a sleepy saint today, you're being raised with Christ today. The tomb's broken open. And then it says, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection. He wasn't the only one resurrected. He was the first. And they followed him. Where do you think he'd been for three days? He'd been preaching in Hades. He'd been telling them, come on, give your hearts to me. I'm going to take you out of this place. I'll say to you today, God has told every one of you the same thing. Give your hearts to him. He's going to break you out of the rut you're in. He's going to break you out. of You know what a rut is? A grave. He's going to break you out of that rut. He's going to break you out of what you know. This coronavirus has just broken everything of the world that they know. Everything people have been comfortable with has become a grave to them because they've turned away from God. And God says, this is an opportunity, folks. You're on your own. Come back to the things that are true, the true treasures, the true riches. Come and become a partaker with him today and see if your life doesn't change. I want to say to you this day, the greatest opportunity we've ever been given, we're in right now. We have time to feed ourselves in the word of God. If you don't feed your body, you'll be weak. But if you don't feel, feed your spirit, you'll be dead. Open up the Bible every day. It's spiritual food. It's spiritual food. This food will feed you. God has given you life and life eternal through his son Jesus, who on this day we celebrate that he's risen from the dead. Amen. Uh, okay, we're going to sing a song to finish with. We're going to play your song. And then I'm going to pray. If you need prayer, if you need prayer, I'd be more than happy to pray for you one-on-one. -on -one. Just raise your hands and you're on the monitor outside. And when we finish the service, I'll pray with you and come into a room. Thank you, Jesus. Bring it here. You pick it up. Some have healed this. All the men that walk with him and turn them away. They crucify the Savior and lay him in the tomb. The life that once was love. 
slipped away that afternoon. Satan gleamed with pleasure that day at Calvary. For he thought he had won a mighty victory. And like him, all of the demons of hell began to cheer. But little did they know. Oi, what happened? <laughs> We're still finding out all the technical bugs. We broke the curse of sin, and it won't come from the dead. We broke the curse of sin, and it I knew he was spending a lot of time at the piano, but <laughs> that was tobacco talking. <laughs> Praise God. We're having fun out here. I'm sorry, I'm having fun here. <laughs> and I've got my technician with me. <laughs> with his phone. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just want to tell you one more testimony. Because Christ has come to live on the inside of us. You will do exploits for God. And every one of you has the ability now to get testimonies of the grace and the power and the wonderful life that's been given to you in Christ. He sent us to Israel, Denise and I, about eight years ago. And there was a rabbi who was dying. And the Lord sent us in to speak to him. He was dying. We became his hands and his feet. We went there on a holiday, not expecting to do anything. But he was dying. So we couldn't leave it at that. And as, as I started listening to the Lord, the Lord said, I want you to go and pray for that man. You are my hands and feet. You are going to release him today. And then he gave me a word of knowledge by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And the Holy Spirit is the one who brings that resurrection life to you. He's the one that raised Christ from the dead and he comes to live in you today. Let him. Let him. Let him. He'll grow you. He'll change you. He'll pour grace out to convert you. And what he will do will be a, a working on the inside of you. Because change, your old nature can't change with your will. It has to change by God. Spirit doing something inside you. So today, if you allow him in, I guarantee you, he'll start to change and the nature of sin you've lived in because we were all born into sin because of the sin of Adam. I want to encourage you today. Today, resurrection's coming to you. Today, resurrection has come. He lives in you. And if you want to do this with me, you can ensure this. I told the Lord I would do this every time I record. I would give people an opportunity to give their lives to him. And today we pray this prayer. If you want to join me and give your life to Christ and see the change that we're sharing. See the change that we're sharing on this uh, broadcast. Just follow me in this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Take over my life. Forgive me for all the wrong things I've done. Forgive me for the sin I've walked in. I forgive everyone who's hurt me. This day, fill me with your Holy Spirit and write my name in your book of life. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this. I guarantee you, you will wake up a different person tomorrow morning. If you have said this prayer from the very heart, your spirit will come alive to God and what we're sharing with you today will start to make sense. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. We have another, another broadcast on Wednesday at 7.30 to coincide with our meetings that we do in Adelaide, which we've been stopped from doing at the time. So we're doing the broadcast 7.30, Wednesday night. God bless you. Some, oh, some people have asked about offerings. Um, just phone up Kath Stevens. She'll send you stuff on email. Bless you. Thank you, sir.